Whether you're a seasoned explorer or a local traveler, Google Maps has become a necessary companion in navigating the world around us. From hidden capabilities that simplify your commute, to insane features that let you save locations, plan your holidays, and turn your smartphone into a virtual tour guide, in today's video, I'll be exploring the abundance of features that make Google Maps not just a navigation app, but a powerful tool that can enhance your daily life. And by the end of the video, you may find yourself questioning how you've been using Google Maps without taking advantage of all of these amazing features. What's up guys, this is Shiv, and welcome back to another video. If you're not using the Save Places feature, you're missing out on one of the biggest capabilities of Google Maps. This is a really convenient tool that lets you bookmark and organize locations of interest for quick and easy access. You can save any location you find of interest, like a favorite restaurant, a must-visit attraction, or the location of a future event. So let's say you're scrolling Instagram and come across a new restaurant you'd like to visit. So I found Bancone, which is an Italian restaurant in London. I'll now open Google Maps and search for Bancone in the search bar at the top. You'll see that it comes up with the restaurant's location and rating, and gives me options to view directions, navigate to the restaurant, check availability, call them, save the location, share, and visit the website. If you click on the save button, it then gives you the option to save this location to a list, and the default lists are want to go, starred places, favorites, and travel plans. I usually save everything in want to go, but if you want to be extra organized, you can click on the new list option at the top and give it a name and description. If I save Bancone in my want to go list, you can see that the save button has now changed to reflect that it's been saved down. If I close the search, you can see that there's now a green flag in Bancone's location, and this stays no matter how much you zoom out. Over the last few years, I've added a lot of save locations around London based on places I like to visit and you can see them all dotted around shown by green flags. All of these can also be stars or hearts, depending on which list you add a location to. You can also access your list by tapping on your profile and then going to your places. This feature is really useful because not only does it keep all the places you want to visit in one easy to view place, but it also lets you plan your trips easily. And next time I'm out in London and looking for something to do or somewhere to eat, I can just open Google Maps and see which save locations are near me. I think this feature is also essential when planning a holiday. When researching the local attractions and best places to eat in a new city, you can add all of your findings to Google Maps. You can then plan your days according to where different attractions and restaurants are. And I do this for all of my holidays and find it really easy to plan my days using Google Maps. A really intuitive feature of Google Maps is Live View, which can help you find your way when walking around a new place. To use Live View, just search for a destination in Maps and tap directions. Then select the walking option and at the bottom of the screen, tap live view. Google Maps then relies on street view imagery paired with AI and augmented reality technology to be able to display directions through the camera view on your screen. Your phone will even vibrate when it's time to make a turn or you've reached your destination. You can even use live view to navigate tricky places indoors, like airports, train stations, and shopping centers, or to explore an unfamiliar area just by lifting your phone. Google Maps also has a lot of great features related to navigation, and I guarantee that you're not using all of these. The first of these is the ability to add a stop on your route. Let's say I want to go from Marble Arch to Tower Bridge, but I want to go via a bakery in Covent Garden first. All you need to do is input your starting and end location, so that would be Marble Arch and Tower Bridge, and then click on the three dots on the right. This brings up a menu in which one of the options is to add a stop. If I click on that option, I can then input the bakery I need to go to, so I'll type a Rome Covent Garden, and then drag that location up using the three lines on the right, so that my route is now from Marble Arch to a Rome and then to Tower Bridge. You can also search along your route to avoid long detours, which I think is one of the most useful features of the app. To search along your route while making your way towards your destination, tap the search icon towards the top right of the navigation screen. You can then select one of the six suggested categories or type what you're looking for, and Google Maps will show you a list of results. So if I type petrol stations, it then shows me all the petrol stations in my vicinity. You'll also see ratings and how many minutes the stop will add to your route, so you can choose the most efficient detour. Just tap your selection, hit add stop, and Google Maps will automatically update your route. 
These features are really useful when you have a few stops you need to go to first or need to add a stop when you're already en route. Google Maps also lets you add as many stops as you want, which is really helpful. Now, when I click the three dots, you'll have noticed that there are a lot of other options too. If you click on options, this lets you choose a few trip preferences, so you can choose to avoid tolls, motorways, and ferries. Let it know if you prefer fuel efficient routes by default and choose which engine type you have. The fuel efficient route is shown by a leaf, which also lets you know approximately how much fuel you'd be saving by taking this route compared to the other suggested routes. Clicking the three dots also shows an option to set a reminder to leave. Clicking this gives you two options. Google Maps can either let you know a precise time to leave your location, so you can see leaving at eight o'clock gets me to my destination by 8.35, or you can choose what time you want to arrive at your destination, and Google Maps will calculate what the best time for you to leave your current location is. So you can see if I set it to arrive by 9 p.m., the feature tells me I need to leave by 8.10 if I wanted to reach on time, taking traffic into account, which I think is really useful. Google Maps also lets you share your location or trip progress with family and friends. Sharing your location with someone not only helps them know when to expect you to arrive somewhere, but it can also be useful as a safety feature so your friends and family know where you are if needed. To share your location, tap on your profile and select location sharing to choose people who should have your real-time whereabouts. You can share your location with your phone contacts or share with a link through a messaging app like WhatsApp. You can also set the length of time you'd like to share your location or stop sharing it at any time. To share your progress on a specific trip, once navigation has started, just swipe up from the bottom of the screen to open the navigation bar and tap share trip progress. You can then select the people you'd like to share your progress with and hit share. The people you've selected will then be able to see your real time location on the map and your estimated time of arrival. Now what naturally comes after navigation? Parking. Google Maps has two great features when it comes to parking, and you may have already noticed the first one. When we were discussing fuel efficient routes being shown by a small leaf, you may have seen a small blue circle next to it with the letter P inside, which actually refers to how busy the parking is at your destination. There are four levels to this. On-site means there's on-site parking at the destination, and then easy, medium, and limited, depending on how difficult it is to find parking at the destination. Once you've parked, Google Maps can actually remember where you've parked your car. If you tap on your profile and click settings, navigation, and scroll to the bottom, you'll see an option to automatically save your parking location. Although you do need to set your location permission to always to enable this feature. If you don't want to do that, you can also set your parking location manually by tapping on the blue dot that shows your location and selecting the save parking option. If you're walking or driving in an area with low phone service, you can still get where you need to go by downloading a map to use offline. This is also really useful if you're abroad and don't have phone signal or want to use less 5G. To use this feature, tap on your profile, select offline maps, and then choose select your own map. You can then zoom in or out on the map to select the area you'd like to have access to when offline, and then tap download. Once that's done, you can use Google Maps to navigate within that downloaded area, even without an internet connection. So that wraps up my in-depth look at the Google Maps app and how to maximize its features for a seamless trip planning and navigation experience. I hope you found this guide helpful and informative. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on all things tech and productivity. Let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts on the Google Maps app or some tips of your own and I'll catch you in the next video.